This week on To The Point, we not only have a So You Think You Can Dance winner, we also have a Broadway star. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk, we talk movies. Welcome on in To The Point with Kristen Burt. We are so excited you are joining us today. And for transparency's sake, we're actually not live. I will be, I'm in Denmark as uh, you guys are watching this. So this is a pre-tape, but I'm so thrilled that we have our guest in today because I don't normally have access to her because she lives on the East Coast. It is your season eight, So You Think You Can Dance winner and three-time Broadway star. Yes, yes. Melanie yeah. Moore. Yeah. Oh my gosh, even the applause. The I applause. Your audience like my imaginary is here. fans. <laughs> like I have to tell you that we didn't talk about this before the show, but last year someone had asked me, you know, on the questions on Instagram, mm -hmm. um, do you have a favorite so you think you can dance winner? And I put <gasps> your face. Oh my god. Yes, and I said I have a lot of them that when I haven't interviewed yet and I'm dying to and I said it was Melanie Moore. Moore. And now I'm here. And now you're here. How and you lucky. did Thank you, you did DM that. me. That's how I found it. I found it deep in my DMs. You were like, "I would love to." Yeah. So, I'm happy to be here. We are so glad you were here and uh, you yeah. know, I've had a lot of questions about why you're here in LA and why many others are here in LA. I know. I know there's like pictures floating around with a lot of so you think you can dance friends yes. and family and Working so with people Mandy have more. So many questions. And we can't really answer them because the project is kind of top secret. Mm -hmm. um, but this is yes. not the first time you guys have workshopped this yes. project. Basically, it is a project for the one and only Mandy Moore uh, choreographer, not singer. Um, <laughs> I always I always have to preface and no, we're not related. Still, we're not related. Um, so everybody funny. wants to know if we're sisters or like I would something. just lie and be like, I mean, yes. I wish in my wildest dreams I'm related to Mandy. But uh, no, I will settle for just getting to work with her. Um, yeah, so it's just like an undisclosed, untitled project for Mandy Moore that she's working on as sort of like a, a passion project and mm -hmm. exciting things, getting some great dancers in a room. And this is our sort of like third uh, time all together, twice in New York, and that's why I'm here in L.A. And I, I mean, grabbed her. Yeah, yeah. I slid into you her and DMs. Mandy, that's the only reason I'm here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know she did not come for me though. Yeah. Let's be honest. That's what you're here for. I Mandy. would have. Okay, I would have. Of course. And your dog is here for My me. My dog though. is here. If you ever hear just like barking or you know, she does. She's not a big barker, but if she gets excited, she could be thrilled. She has a bone right now, so she might be here on the table by the end of the he, show. That's very possible. It's totally possible. Okay, I have to say one thing. I did yes. not know you were. About my height. I'm 5'3", you 5'4"? Five, 5'2". Five, you're five, You're shorter than me. I am shorter than you. I thought from the way you dance that you were much, much taller. I thought I'll you were about 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's um, a funny thing. I feel like so many of us are like peanut people. Like on, <laughs> yeah. on the show, you know, Marco, who's my partner on the show, yeah. you know, he's been here, is like only like 5'5", five, five, I think. Yep. He's a peanut person too. I, I, that, I That sounds bad. But like, you know, we're just, a lot of us like pack a punch. <laughs> we're just <laughs> short. But that is one of the things that I get most when I'm in New York and uh, people come backstage or people meet me at the autograph line. And they're like, oh my God, you're actually so small in person. And I'm like, what? Is I, that a compliment? I don't know what that it means. Is. <laughs> I, Cause I think you dance tall. Yes, and I, yes, and I, yes. I think that is that really I good. Get. Yes. Yeah. Cause you, you dance, you use your space, mm -hmm. which is good. And mm -hmm. I, when I was dancing five through, I used to get that comment all the time, yes. please dance bigger, yes. dance out, don't dance underneath yes. yourself. Yeah. You don't do that. You mm -hmm. do the opposite of what I was doing. And yes. that's why I honestly thought you were probably about five, six, five, seven. I will take it. Yes. No, I always wanted to be a Rockette when I was younger and that was never in the cards for me. My mom is like five, two, five, one. And my grandma was four, 11. So my mom was just like, okay, yeah, you just keep dreaming on that Rockette <laughs> dream. Just like that five, five and a half. You just keep on dreaming there. Not hun. happening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know five, five and a half in stocking feet. They mm -hmm. always say in tights, yes. you cannot even have heels on five, five and a half. Yes, when I was, I was just doing a show at New York City Center uh, called Chorus Line. Um, just a small show <laughs> well, called yeah, Chorus just, Line. Yeah, yeah, just like a little week long at City Center, and the Rockettes were rehearsing next door where we were rehearsing, and some of us went to the bathroom, and truly, it was like a land of Amazon. Like I've never seen so many, just like pulled gorgeous they were all in leotard and tights with their heels on their french all, twist yes everybody had their hair done everybody was in a perfect their perfect lines there was like six lines of like 60 girls or 50 mm -hmm. girls it was insane and then there was like me who's like five two and like really wacky like <laughs> excuse me sorry i just have to get to the bathroom because you had to walk like through their space to get to the bathroom and you know of course line we're in a line and we're like doing you know we're all very pulled up as well but in like such a different way so it was yeah. just a 
very entertaining mix of like people who were like five two with like rockhead dreams, and then like the ladies themselves. Oh, I know, and they're all really incredible. I interviewed yes. um, one of them over uh, the holiday season yeah. for Dance Network, and it was really interesting just hearing how everything is precise. And I don't know if you saw their rehearsal, but they have numbers on the floor, and no. you have to hit those numbers. Yes. 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 And I thought, like, uh, Chorus Line was probably the most specific and hardest show that I've done in terms of uh, specificity and accuracy and how important that is. But truly, like, I, they were, like, and the angle of the hat and the angle of the bevel and, like, which way. I was like, wow, I don't know if I'm cut out for that. <laughs> I was really, but they all just do it with, like, a smile on their face. It's such hard work. It's such long hours. It's, I mean, it's pretty incredible. It's no joke. And by the way, they do not touch each other's back for that kick line. I did know that. I yeah, did know that. it's all from your core. Mm -hmm. So appreciate the Rockettes. Yes. That's what I say. I know, maybe one day I'll get to be like a dancing bear or like yes. one of the singers that like just pop <laughs> in and do some of the routines. And they have the ice <laughs> one skating rink. Yes, I can't ice skate really. I mean, I can, but not like that. But yeah. maybe I can just like, I'll be mic'd and just pretend to ice skate Christmas around. Christmas in New York, whatever yeah. that song is. Yeah, <laughs> it's something like that. It's something like that. Dreams. I I want to know how have you been studying singing your whole life because it's kind of been amazing watching your career post so you think you can dance yes um good question i used to well my first like love was like playing the guitar i mean i did everything as a kid but like i used to play the guitar not actually playing just like strumming and sing for my mom and say like oh, i want to be i want to be on broadway and she was like great well you can't sing again my mom's a character she's always very honest with me she's like, we loved her on sing. so you yeah, think yeah 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 you saw a lot of her um <laughs> And so she was like, you can't really sing, so we should put you in voice lessons. So I took voice lessons for like a couple of years, and then I forgot all the words to Oh Holy Night at a nursing home when mm. I was doing a holiday concert. And that was like probably the last time that I sang in public. <laughs> Truly, it was at a nursing home. And like I was, I could have just picked up anywhere, I could have sang anything, but it was just the tear and the runoff and the just oh, like not. The humiliation. Yeah, yeah. Of, yeah. Oh, holy night, you let me down. It was really myself. I let me down. I was too nervous. I got scared. It's hard. Stage and, frights are yeah, a real thing. And I was a kid, you know, and they're like, just all want you to like do well. And you're just like, nah. I would have been like, mm -hmm. Like, you would have humming. thought because I used to forget my solos all the time, my dance solos all the time. Did I would, you improv them? Yes, a lot? always. But for some reason, like if I can't remember the words, I was just it was like mm, like. And you're like, people are know the words, so yes. I'm gonna leave. Yeah, there's no making it up. There's no making it up. It's just abort mission. Um, so that happened, and then I didn't sing for a while. I did chorus in middle school. Uh, had to quit when I went to high school because I just was dancing so much. I didn't really have enough time. Um, sang some at my dance studio because we did musical theater numbers. Yep. Um, and then I had friends for baccalaureate my senior year who I guess somebody was supposed to sing and they pulled out last minute and they're like, Melanie, you can sing. We need somebody to sing. You have to do this. And I don't know why I said yes to this because <laughs> it was like not good. And but I just got up there and I was bold. My voice was like shaky, but I sang and that was really the first like redemption round from Oh Holy Night. And then I didn't sing again for probably three years. I went to college for half of a year, did So You Think, lived in LA. Um, and then I moved back to New York and all I did was take voice lessons for a year because... I think casting sometimes uh, remembers how you walk into a room, how you present yourself first and foremost. And I didn't want to be the girl who like comes in like posts, so you think you can dance, and they're like, she's such a great dancer, but she cannot sing yeah. or she can't carry a tune. We can't hear those sixteen bars at all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, just don't. Just please, just sh mm. turn off the mic. Yeah. Uh, so. It was pretty amazing that, that I just did that. I just taught on convention and assisted on convention, kept taking class uh, and made money, and then was in voice lessons twice a week. And the first audition I went on uh, was basically Finding, Finding Neverland. Neverland. So <laughs> it was the right time and the right place. And uh, yeah. The right choreographer, too. To, even yes. though you had not worked with Mia, because mm -hmm. I, I interviewed no. Mia and she said, we had never worked together because it was no. the season that Mia had stepped yeah. out. Yeah, she wasn't on that season. I've had tons of friends that have worked with her. And again, it was for an undisclosed project, uh, for an undisclosed musical directed by Diane Paulus. Uh, and I was so new to the scene. And I had uh, the, really the first audition that I went to was for um, a revival of Brigadoon at um, the S. Mm? 
I can't, I don't know if it was at the Lyric, but it was in Chicago. Okay. Uh, and so I ended up booking that. So I was like, I'm going to get my equity card and this is yes. going to be so exciting. And, uh, you know, she has like a dance solo in it. This is so cool. And then uh, my agents were like, yeah, well, you also got this call. So why don't you go? It was two days later. And I sort of felt like, you know, I already, I already going to get my already equity booked. card. I'm like, I, you know, I'm going in hot. And I like walk in the room and it's Mia who's standing opposite me. And both of us just started laughing and like ran to each other. We knew each other through people we had never right. met. Uh, gave each other a big hug and then from then on it was sort of like okay well I just booked this job and I'm gonna do this and not only is it gonna be out of town but there's also a Broadway contract associated with it so here we go in that moment I, I just wonder this because even though Mia is not someone who you know well you mm -hmm. know of her and mm -hmm. you through other friends and yeah. things like that do you think that that relaxed you maybe a little bit to have a friendly face in the room because you knew she was going to be um, cheering you on. Yes, but I don't know. I mean, I don't I don't know. I mean, Mia's hard. She you is know, hard. I'm like friendly face, like a, a familiar face, yes. Yeah. And I love her work and I'm so such a big fan of hers, but friendly, I don't know. You know, like <laughs> I'm like, "Oh gosh, I just, you know, she she pulls so much out of dancers." That's right. And she's known for being notoriously hard. So I was like, Okay, here we go. You know, like uh, you know, it's 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 different when you have a friendly relationship for, with someone versus a relationship with somebody who uh, is sort of your boss, is choreographing for you. Yeah. And so it's it, it was like I was nervous, you know, because I had heard like she's so the hard Mia and the Mia stories, you know. So it was it was great though. It was such a beautiful uh, experience. It was such a beautiful thing that I felt like I was able to create with her. And you know, there's nothing. It was my Broadway debut. It was her Broadway debut. That's and crazy. Crazy. Really, it couldn't have happened at a better time. That was like the most amazing experience. Um, first of all, tell everyone what you sang in your audition because I think it's kind of awesome. Oh my god, <laughs> have you heard that? Did I tell you this story? Where no, have you I haven't told this? me, but I it's been told elsewhere. Oh, but god. for people that haven't heard, I know. It, so, this is good. So my audition, they were asking for Finding Neverland. They were asking for a pop British pop song and like people were going in with like Adele they were going in with like some beautiful like things like ballads and I was like British pop British pop you know what I'm gonna sing the Spice Girls <laughs> Don't know. And so, I mean, I do know. I was like, I love the Spice Girls. What have I got? I'm a soprano. Let's pop it. Which Spice Girl and are you? I, I mean, there's two named Melanie, so I always had to be them. <laughs> yes. But I feel very, I feel very much like a posh in my heart. Okay, that's good. Because I love clothing and I want to be like, Victoria you know Beckham what I mean? Is Duh. Amazing. I mean, is there anything better? No. But then her and her gorgeous family, I just watched her runway show. <laughs> so good she's just little I just, Brooklyn I, yeah I'm like I know but like they're Harper, all just yeah. look so lovely and you know there's Instagram versus reality all of those things and like TV versus reality but I just think matters. they're just a beautiful little family very talented humans that being said um I <laughs> always whenever we would play Spice Girls I always had to be one of the Melanies which is uh Sporty Spice. Yeah, Mel C or Mel B. Yes, exactly. Scary Spice. Sporty or Scary. It was I usually was sporty, so. I love oh, it. Was scary. She just was too cool for me. I and Spice cool. Girls helped get you the job. It did. It did. And I didn't know. I sang Stop by the Spice Girls. Stop right now by the Spice Girls. And I, like, ended usually now looking back at it. And I know our music director. And she just, like, everybody in the room sort of just, like, stared at me when I finished. Because I was, like, feeling it. And I was, like, stop right now. And, like, put my hand up. And, like, why this shape? why I chose to do that. I'm not quite sure about, I don't really know what I was going for, but it, I was feeling it. And then like, they were like, okay, thank you. And I was just still there and I just slowly put my arm down and was like, thank you. You have a little sense of embarrassment yeah. for that like oh my new gosh, yes. Broadway yeah. auditioner. Yes, enthusiasm. And it turns out that our, um, Elliot, one of our uh, writers of the music, actually writes for the Spice Girls. So he thought that was a, a hilarious story. <laughs> she was like, of course you sing Spice Girls. I mean, you can look at it and be really embarrassed, but honestly, at the same time, there's something about innocence yes. going into something and you were feeling <clears throat> it and you were feeling the passion that people love that. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, Mary Mitchell Campbell, who was our amazing music director, always says like, you know, you guys are just strong and wrong. And I felt like I wasn't wrong on the notes. I was like spot on the notes. It was just like not the most you were a right extra. choice. You I was just, just a little extra. Yeah, it just, they were like, wow, she's really excited. But I mean, Peter Pan is like, he was overly, you know, he's like energetic <laughs> and excited. So I think they were like, yeah, that's, that's her. There's there she is. Yeah. <laughs> and I know you guys worked out of town on this job, mm -hmm. but you 
if I'm remembering correctly, you guys went to the Tonys before the show was actually on Broadway to yes. do like a preview. Yes. And Jay Hud, Jennifer Hudson. Yes. I think we have a photo too of it. We'll pull up. Yes. Um, which was pretty amazing. And there's like you and Jay Hud. Yeah. Uh, how mm -hmm. do you like snap yourself out of? I mean, like, hello, I'm from Georgia, and now I'm here at the Tonys yeah. with Jennifer Hudson. Yeah. That was a surreal experience. Oh yeah, it's right there. Um, it was a very surreal experience. Doesn't she look beautiful? Look at that dress. She's amazing. Oh my gosh. And all those boys are like fully adults now, which is nuts. Crazy. I I know. I'm like, oh, gosh, we're all um, getting old. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, it was a very surreal experience because I truly, like, I hadn't even played, I had never done a musical before, and I was on the Tonys doing this. And I was like, I don't know. I just was a very surreal thing with, like, all of these famous people who are famous not only for, like, TV film, but also famous in, like, the theater right. genre, which is just so... I, I adore it. I love working there. I think it's some of the hardworking, most hardworking group of, like, artists that I know and have met. And they doing eight shows a week takes so much dedication and hard work and, and time. <laughs> and so I was just like, here I am. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. I just felt sort of like a poser. I was like, I'm just going to act like a go here. So yeah, I, I, I did it. They sent the invite to the wrong house. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> it was it was crazy. It was just it was supposed to be like a preview to make people excited and hear the music. And I think it definitely did that. It was like energizing for people. And uh, definitely for me, I was like, okay, I haven't even done a musical yet. And here we go. I'm on I'm the Tonys. The Tonys. Yeah. I've arrived. Yeah, I'm yeah. done. I know. You'll never get your first Broadway show back in that terms mm -hmm. of like everything is new every yes. night is new yes. the opening night the preview night whatever it is yeah um what do you savor most about that experience um well I, the cast is full of some of the most amazing people that I know uh, it's just like it was such a crazy talented group of people and they were all so inspiring so I think that is something that I will sort of savor from the experience but for me the thing that sticks out the most are like probably two things one of them was my technically your Broadway debut people say is your first paid performance which was our first preview mm -hmm. not our actual opening um, <clears throat> you know technicality all those things right and the <laughs> show on Broadway opened differently than it did in Boston uh, we had to sort of cut and change it so the solo that I was starting with Jay Hud on that actually ended up being when the curtain opened and Tinkerbell flew through the curtain opened and it was just me standing there holding Tinkerbell as Peter Pan and I did like a uh, minute and a half or two minute sort of dance solo and then Maddie came on and you know we had like a little exchange and it was um, when I was I remember just hearing the lights go down for the first time and the audience lost to their mind like everybody freaked out and I was like I was like that kid who forgot oh, no. Old Holy Night I was so nervous and I just sort of like was standing on my mark because you know it has to fall through the thing and you have to get it and like right on the right place and the curtains open and everybody started screaming because it's like the image of Peter Pan holding Tinkerbell in like a Broadway stage and people so exciting. started screaming so I just started sobbing and I like it was like uncontrollable and I'm a crier <laughs> so I just like I start crying and I have chills and I, the music starts so I have to start dancing and I'm supposed to be laughing but I'm still crying at just like how moving the moment was and right. how exciting and how I've worked so hard for that and so I was like like strangely like laughing sobbing and like Maddie came on stage and like I'm supposed to throw it to him and he like looked at me and was like <laughs> Like, like what's going are you on? Okay? <laughs> so you know, I, I from then on, I was totally fine. But that moment was just like I was sort of blown away at so just powerful, like, honestly. And to start your Broadway debut like standing on stage by yourself, like as Peter Pan, I was so like, you're not in a what group. Is, yeah, what's not happening? doing a big number? Yeah, where you're like, yeah. And people are like Peter Pan, you know, like people love him and the show. He's an icon. So it was just, it was a very surreal. There are experience. websites dedicated to Peter Pan. Yes. You must know this. Yes. 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 It's he's a very interesting, to say the least, character. And Tinkerbell, which I learned from Disney, is women's favorite character. Mm. Even beyond uh, the Disney princesses and things like that, they mm -hmm. sell more Tinkerbell merchandise hmm. than anything else. Who knew? Who knew? I know. Isn't that that's amazing? An interesting fact. I think that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, huh. So you didn't stay for the whole run of the show? Cause I didn't stay. Did you no. have another show to do? I did. I did. <laughs> but um, Amy Yakima replaced you. She did. Yes, she did. Season you, 10 yes, co-winner with I know. Fiction. I love that. Yes. Yeah. You know, you can't, like, it's like, how, how can you Handing find your baby over better? to better? Yeah. No. Um, yeah. I didn't stay very long. I, well, I technically, I was with the show for a long time because I did two workshops in New York 
and then I mm -hmm. did the out of town and then we came and we did all Broadway rehearsals and we opened made it through the Tonys and then um, when I first moved to New York after um, So You Think and living in LA for a little bit, I was like, you know, I'm gonna be in a company. That's what I wanna do. Mm -hmm. LA wasn't necessarily my place. I wanna do live performance. Um, and so I started sort of uh, taking class with Cedar Lake. Um, I knew their director, Swan, who was there. Contemporary and Ballet Company. Contemporary yep. Ballet Company, yep. I started <laughs> taking ballet class with them and learning some of their rep. And um, I wanted to be in the company so bad and I had so many friends that were getting into the company and I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to happen for me. And I was taking ballet like five hours a day, like every day, Monday through Friday, like very serious. And um, I didn't end up getting into the company and I auditioned three times and every time I made it to the end, they're like, there's not a contract here for you yet. You know, because they, they run it like the people who leave then contracts open and you get in and yep. they're like, oh, there's not a contract. And then when there was a contract, I wasn't offered it. And I was like, you're like, Devastation Nation. Because it's your dream at that yes. point. Yeah, and you're working so hard for it. And um, so I learned some of the rep that I learned when I was there was uh, Hoffa Schechter's work, who is an amazing and brilliant contemporary ballet, contemporary choreographer. Mm -hmm. um, and I loved that rep. So when I was at, in Finding Neverland, an audition came out for... Um, a Broadway show, a Broadway revival that Hope Fesh was going to be choreographing. And, and, you know, I looked at the show and I saw that it was Fiddler on the Roof. Right. And I was sort of like, I didn't grow up really watching many musicals. Uh, I'm not Jewish, so I don't know that they would even consider casting me in the show because mm -hmm. um, I, I want to leave space for people who are Jewish and are of the heritage. And um, I don't ever want to, like, take somebody's role that, right. you know. Um, and also, I don't think that there's necessarily a role for me. I don't think the women really dance very much in the show mm -hmm. and I said to my mom when we were uh, when I was auditioning I said you know I don't think I'm going to be able to do the show because there's not a role for me and my mom was like well there's the three like daughters you could and be I said, one of them uh, uh, yeah and I said to my mom I was like mom I, I don't think that I am going to be right for that like I've never even taken an acting class like I've never done anything she was like just don't count it out Melanie you never know always always my mom with like the one liners mother. I know <laughs> um, and so I went to audition and Ended up getting the workshop, and so I was doing the workshop. We did, uh, I think, three weeks, two or three weeks, uh, just first week learning Hofesh's, like, sort of the way he moves his rep, and then he came in, and we had to present for the Robbins Foundation uh, to get the approval, because it was the first time Fiddler was getting new movement. Oh, wow. Which was so exciting. And that's Jerome and Robbins, everyone, yes, just yes. to throw out Robbins, names. Yes, yes, I know, I know. Robbins. I'm just like, <laughs> um, a lot of names. Um, and so we got the approval, and uh, our, our last week they started vocalizing us, which basically means they have us sing uh, to see who could be in the show, who has a good enough voice, because it was just a dance workshop. So who has a good yep. enough voice that they could place you in the show, who fits? And um, I sang for them, and then I was so nervous, and I sang, and then... You didn't I, sing Spice Girls, I, I take didn't it. Sing, I didn't <laughs> sing the Spice Girls. Strangely enough, it seemed like a different vibe. <laughs> yeah, and so I sang for them, and then they... Bart, our director, sort of looked at me, and he was like, can you do that again? And I was like, oh my god, I was bad. Oh no, I was yeah. flat. Can you play my starting note? Like, I was just, You're like, like e mortified. I was like, yeah, I think I'm on. I think I'm on. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I sang it again, and then they sort of said, okay, yeah, great. They all were all looking at each other. So I was like, oh man, maybe they wanted me for, like I was like, maybe I'll do the show as a cover. That would be a great opportunity. Right. I've never learned that before. aspect yes. of it. Get in there and like try and learn about what it would take to be a principal in a show and what it would even be like, you know, anything acting wise. And we were in rehearsals there that day and Bart came up to me, he came to the side and just said, so, um, are you interested in doing the show? And I was like, absolutely. I mean, I, the movement we've created is so beautiful and I love it. And he was like, great, can you act? And I looked at him and I was like, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> Surprise, like, I don't literally, know. I have no idea. I've never taken an acting class. And he said, okay, great. And so the next week I was in for Chava and then um, I thought I bombed it. I was like, oh my gosh, this was crazy. It was like the first time I had really needed to like, they sent me matchmaker. I had to to learn it I had to go in mm. and I was like that was that's a whole new thing so you have to learn it quickly and I wasn't a fan of the show so I didn't really know and so I had to learn it and sang it and I was like oh gosh I didn't do a good job and then like cue like a couple days later they're like you have a call back for Monday I was like great redemption redemption so I go back I on Monday this. I was like yes I can do it I go back on Monday Sheldon is there who is the writer um and I um 
I, I was wearing a hat and Sean was like, I really like your hat. And so immediately like, I was like, yeah, I got this. And so I sang for them. And then they called me later that day and said, um, can you come in on Wednesday? I was like, okay, another callback. Here really we go. Got it. Really got it. I can do it. We're going to do scenes. They were like, we just want to do like chemistry reads with you and some other girls to see like oh, your sisters. sisters. Yep. Yeah. And so I'm like, this is like really happening. Like, this is so exciting. And I go in and um, on Wednesday before my matinee of Finding Neverland, and I went in and I was with one other girl that was there for Huddle who ended up getting Huddle and uh, two girls that were there for Seidel. And Samantha, who played Huddle, and myself sang with both of them. And the last sort of like moment that that happened, uh, Al was in the room who ended up being Seidel. And we all three, when we finished Matchmaker, picked the right harmonies. We had <sighs> never rehearsed it. We just Ooh. picked, we broke out into spontaneous, perfect three part harmony. And Sheldon stood up and said, Perfect, send them on the road. And so all of us were like, mm, Does it mean we get the job? Did, did I get it? Does no that way. mean I got it? <laughs> um, and they called us right after the matinee and let us know that we had gotten it. So that was like such an exciting time and like it's crazy yeah and I was like what is happening I have never acted in my life why are you trusting me to do this I don't know but I can sometimes I think you know maybe as an artist you're you think you don't know it but yes. you're you're trusting your instinct yes. somewhere yeah. subconsciously and yeah. what you're deciding to do in the acting moment yeah and I, I I will say I have had such great teachers throughout my life who have really taught me to be honest and continue just like why are you doing that Ke kept me honest about you know why are you you bought mine. Do you, are you just bought mine because you want to do a kick? Like, well, I don't like it needs to come from something. So it would just took like we did some vocal release technique and uh, getting because it's the strangest thing when you don't talk on stage. I've n I'd never talked on stage before. Right. Like there were some lines in Neverland, but I, they weren't as like prominent as what I was about to be doing. And it was like Bart said to me once, I believe you when you're dancing. I believe you when you're walking. I believe you when you're just standing there. But and when you're singing, but I don't believe when you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you don't know that like what you're saying is valid. Like you just aren't used to hearing. And this your own is a voice. property that a lot of people are familiar with yes. too. It's yes. not like this brand new show. Yeah. And I was acting with like two of the greatest actors that I have ever met, Jess Hex and Danny Burstein. Like I, I, I and the sisters and all of the guys, everybody in the mm -hmm. show was amazing. And Bart, like everybody's amazing. So I just was like okay, I better pull up. <laughs> I better figure it out. I better act like I know what, what I'm doing. Means. Yeah, yeah. So uh, luckily the show was just beautiful and I um, learned so much and that show was just like, I mean, I grew like immensely. I can't, I, but the saddest part was like getting taken out of all of the dance sections because uh, Hava has like the Hava ballet, but that's it. She doesn't dance in anything else. So okay. I just was like, it was sadness. Like I was like, mm -hmm. but tell how you got yourself into the Macy's Thanksgiving I Day did, Parade. I did. I got myself into the parade because because it was before the show debuted, or maybe it was like right after the show debuted, or we were in previews or something, and they had said what number they were gonna do, and it happened to be the same choreography that we did in the workshop, so I knew it. And Bart like knew that I really wanted to be in it, and I was like, Bart, is there any like possibility, because you wouldn't need a wig for me, that because I have short hair, that like maybe you wanna put me? He was like, yes, you can be in it. So they dressed I'm me like, up like yes. a boy, and I'm saying, yeah! You're like, I don't care. I will I, be a boy. I will never. be a girl. Of course. It's the of Macy's course. Thanksgiving Day Parade. And it was my first one because Neverland ended up doing it that same year that we did it. Um, but you were but, already out of But I was already out of the so show. I, so they went, we like sort of went like back to back. And that was so fun to get to see everybody and, you know, enjoy that day with them. And, but like from a different vantage point. Was it a cold day or a wet day? Because sometimes it's really cold. It, I think it was cold, but we were in a lot of wool. So I don't really Perfect. remember it being too crazy. If you watch the Rockettes again, they have like yes. little tiny costumes. Or like what? Oh, the, like um, um, oh, Donna Summer the musical this year. They were like freezing. I, I mean, I, they didn't look freezing. They were like burying their cold. heads off, yeah. and like they looked amazing. But I was like, you are in tiny outfits. That's cold. <laughs> I just wrote that song for um, them. <laughs> I, if I'm remembering correctly, too, Fither kind of uh, ended right as Dolly was kind mm -hmm. of going into rehearsal. Yes. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I was very lucky. <laughs> okay, and you guys, if you I don't know... know who she co-starred with in Hello, Dolly, Bette Midler. <laughs> oh, and on days that Bette Midler was off, it was Donna Murphy. Yeah. And then when... 
<laughs> then when Bet left, it was, it was Bernadette, Bernadette Peters. Yeah, uh, yeah, which is really something ridiculous. It it is again. I mm. truly, I'm like, I don't know how I ended up here. I am totally happy to be here, but <laughs> I don't know how I ended up with these people. I love them, <laughs> and I feel so lucky to be like learning from them, laughing with them, just like being my silly self. They all like loved my dog. I had my dog in the dressing room with me all the time, and they would like come up and be like, "How's Pippa doing?" And you know, I was like, <laughs> "You're like Pippa. You're coming uh, with me everywhere." Yeah, every, because everywhere. You ben Miller comes yeah. to my dressing room. <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly um yeah so they we had auditions for that i had done the um i guess i had already booked it by then but um i did all the pre-production the dance workshops with warren who i warren adore. carlisle um yes i adore him uh his and choreography is hard by the way it's so hard it's not funny how fast it is it's, and technical it is i know yeah and it looks yeah, amazing because he's a dancer himself so he gets it he's like you guys can do it you guys can add that in um yeah so I I um, ended up booking Dolly. I was going to leave Fiddler at the year mark, but we figured out that we were only extending for a couple of extra months. So they asked me if I would stay, and I was more than happy to do that. So then I had a week off, and then I started uh, Dolly, and I was with the show for until it closed, a year and a half. Yeah. Uh, I know. I know. Okay, when you have someone like Bet who doesn't do a lot of Broadway shows, I yes. mean, having her come in, and, and you know every night this show is sold out. Mm -hmm. People are getting scalp tickets yeah. for a thousand dollars or more I know. to come and see nuts. you guys I, I feel like that as a performer that's a great responsibility even on days when you're like i don't <clears throat> feel like they're on the show because you do have days like that because yes. we all have that at yes, our job absolutely uh but there's a responsibility there to really yeah. show up yeah and you know i think it honestly a lot of times people say like the company and the uh work ethic of a company starts from the top down and bet and david hyde pierce uh who was playing her opposite in the show uh horace who played he was my uncle in the show they were always present and bet only missed one show and it was because they were like bet you are dizzy and you have to run around that pass roll we're not letting you go on stage <laughs> she was in <laughs> the dress room. she had her makeup on like she was uh, ready and they're like sorry we're not letting you go uh, on stage um and you know again we, we have amazing understudies that like came out there and like had to win over an audience that was expecting to see bet midler which is like probably the hardest job ever yeah. um and it was remarkable like you know the whole company rallied around these people people and it truly like bet knew that these people were paying so much money to see her and you know she said you know she would say like do you know what it cost when I came to see a show when I was younger like because bet also was in we had a mutual connection because she played Seidel in Fiddler on the Roof uh in before it closed the original version mm -hmm. um and so she would say like when i was in that show like you know it wasn't like that my, my family could come and see the show for like five dollars for like twenty dollars <sighs> it was like a ticket or eight dollars or something um and so it was so interesting that like she knew how much money people were coming and she would always joke around that like with that price of that ticket they should be getting a steak and a bottle of champagne and come in my dressing and, room yeah, after right yeah and she's <laughs> like i mean that's not happening but like that's like that's a crazy amount to Hey. so expensive um and it, 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 she was there all the time david was there all the time it was like and it started with their care and concern and pride for what they were doing it moved down the whole company gavin was always there kate was always there beanie taylor you know everybody we all sort of rallied together and it was a company of professionals those were some of the most again the most amazing artists i made lifelong friends of that show because and it was truly like I don't know how, but they cast it like the nicest people ever. And everyone, we would hang out, we would have parties. Like, we we had um, a Halloween party where you like everyone dressed up their floor or their dressing rooms right. as like different things. And Bet participated. You know, the boys' dressing room participated. Every all all of our dressers participated. That's it was just so like fun. that company truly was like so cohesive. So it was a sad sort of loss when the show. Um, ended up being closed and uh, we were happy that Bet and David came back after uh, Bernadette and Victor left to close the show together but it was just like a, a big beacon of like joy and love on Broadway. What is that like to close a show because you hadn't experienced that I before. I had. I closed Fiddler as well. Oh you so, did? Yes, That's right. Yes, okay. I closed Fiddler. What is that like? It's so weird. It's weird. I don't like know. Four shows left. Three shows. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're like counting down. I mean, there's one thing. It, it feels difficult when you leave a show and it's still running because that it's you do create these sort of like 
like little environments. You have these like little worlds in a theater. You know mm -hmm. all the same people. You do the same thing every day. You see the same people all the time, eight shows a week, so six days a week. And so you do have this sort of like ecosystem that happens within a theater. And it's very strange when you leave a show and the show is still running to think like, oh, I'm just like not a part of it. But that world, those people are doing the same exact thing that they did every single day. So it's this very weird like, I feel like I'm missing out. Yeah, but like, happening yeah, without me? I'm like, there's things, I know what they're doing right now. I know where they are And I'm not there. And I'm not there. No, it's Amy. I you know, know, I know, I know. Like, what's Amy doing right now? Text Amy How's Yakma. quick change? Like, what's going on? Um, oh my God, can you imagine? Um, <laughs> what's happening right now? <laughs> Amy, how's your quick change going? She's like, Melanie, I'm in a quick change. I I'm in you. the middle of a show. <laughs> yeah. um, but then, so that's like a very weird and strange feeling. But then when you close a show, it's like the world itself, like, just like goes away. Truly, like, yeah. they do load out the following morning or that night afterwards so it's, it's like end. you just watch like pieces of your stage just like come down the marquee the goes away yes it's so sad yeah. it's like and you know dolly it, it was just like a big like jerry's love letter to musical theater uh zach's our director and it was just it was just like the happiest little bubble so it was a sad thing i mean now it's on tour with some amazing people betty buckley is amazing i saw it while they were here yep uh, and Jess Prado's in it, and you know, it just, it's wonderful, and Were I recommend... Were you asked to do the tour? Did you think about doing the tour? Um, I was not asked. I asked. I didn't think about it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't think... Uh, I did the show for a year and a half, so maybe like after National some time tour is away. a commitment, too. It's yeah, tough. Yeah, and I mean, I was with the show for a long time, so I feel like I'm like... I need to give my vocal cords because I was like screaming the whole show because uh, Ermengarde <laughs> just like cries and screams. Yes, she does. In like a beautiful wig and great costumes. And um, I was like, I think I just need some time away <laughs> from that character. <laughs> I'm like hearing that scream in my dreams. And and going on the road too, I, a lot of people don't realize it's, it's really hard because yeah. you're in different environments. You're traveling. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's a bus. Sometimes it's a plane. Mm -hmm. Everyone's getting sick at this time of year. Yep. It adds like a whole, you're not going home yeah. to your own bed. It adds a whole other yeah. like you're trying to eat healthy yeah and you're like trying like some people are in relationships and you're trying to balance like a relationship or like you know I would have had my dog and I would have been bringing Pippa around with me it wouldn't yeah. just been like a little crazy a lot. um yeah it's it tours hard I don't know people like some people it. love it yes my husband did it for two and a half years and I will tell you by the last six months of the tour I was like I am done with this tour I'm yeah. not on tour yeah I'm and I'm here done. yeah and I am done yeah <laughs> I was yeah. so happy when it's it was hard. over it yeah. was hard yeah it was hard but but yeah, not any. I don't think people realize unless they've been on tour, or experienced yeah. it in some yeah. way. Uh, it's weird not to be in your bed that many nights. Yeah, yeah. Like, and it's fun for a while, and then if you have a company that doesn't get along, great. Yeah, that I've seen that happen yes. too. Yes, oh, yeah, me too. It's, it's a long sad. tour. It's scary. Um, I. What is next for you? Because we were talking a little bit about this, and I think everyone probably is like, what is next? Because you did a chorus line. I did. You played Judy first. Turner. I did. I did. I know. Stepping I was... into the shoes, I mean, of yeah. Michael Bennett's choreography. Um, did Bjork Lee do the choreography? Bjork said it, and uh, Bob Avian was our director. Um, yes. Originals, people. <laughs> yes. Yes. So that was terrifying. Um Yeah, I did. I was so happy that they considered me, because usually Judy is very tall and lanky and um her their, her sort of like comedy comes from her being that tall and lanky and like awkward and sort of gawky um and that is not the same comedy that i have i'm like i mean like you said i'm like way lower to the ground so my comedy is like sort of here it's not like you know i don't know it's just like a very different sort of like place to different, come from it's okay yeah yeah um so and i also had never seen the show before <gasps> You hadn't even seen that I terrible haven't... movie they did. No, I saw nothing. Wow. I didn't see the show at all. So It was a terrible movie, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was, it's okay. I, don't, I have no feelings about it, so I'm yeah. sure. Um, yeah, I um, had never seen it, so I went in sort of like wide-eyed, and they wow. taught us all the choreography in the first week. And I was like, blah, blah. <laughs> what? <laughs> and so many dancers already know it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure yeah. a lot of people yes. just stepped right in. Pretty much everybody. The there was, yeah. I think, Everyone's like, like six of us out of the 20 that didn't know it. Yeah. 
and it was terrifying and everybody else was like oh geez like amazing like knew the moves got it and I was like I'm sorry what's happening in this scene like I'm just confused where am I supposed to be looking and I think I think they have lived in that world so many times like where's Zach the director right I'm like is he he on stage am I is he on a god mic I don't know where he is he in the back and they're like Melanie what's happening so uh yeah there is um the last Broadway revival on YouTube for anybody who like me hasn't seen it it's very wonderful yes um and so I watched that once I was like week one we're not like in the previous shows that I've done we've had sort of like uh, not a round table I guess a rectangular table if you will where you read the scripts aloud to each other so you mm -hmm. can hear sort of the rhythm and hear how like you can hear the comedy that people have chosen to go in with so you know sort of like what you're playing and how the script reads and that sh we didn't do that at all so like oh. people are and I had never seen it so you know when they're like okay great you've done the opening stand forward and everybody this is what you auditioned mm -hmm. with so just like go through your sort of like monologues your introductions and I was like dying laughing like truly like crying laughing at like some of the choices that my friends were making because they were so funny like you know I did, and it just like I and then you got to me and I was like should I, should I step forward is that Wait, how this works how do I, like, do I this? was like oh pe people just go we're going we're just going <laughs> which is like actually part of the show you know because you're not it's supposed to be an audition you're supposed to be extremely uncomfortable but it really I guess works. for you it yeah was like, I was really like, truly I was like flying by the seat of my pants going like, in blind <laughs> yeah. um Two things. Yes. Have you read by Orc's book on the line? I have not read her book. It's so good. Okay. By the way, yes. Yes. It's so I I have I, seen the documentary now. You, but you I saw every little step. I did. I have yeah. seen every little step. Yeah. That's a good one, too. Yes. That's very uh, good. Tice Diorio. Yes. If you guys want to watch. I just saw him the other weekend and we were talking all about it. Yes. I would love to even just have him for like 20 minutes to talk about that because I think it's a really interesting moment. And I don't want to spoil the documentary because it's so good. It's and so see, good. And seeing how it plays out. Um, but um, psychologically, how things play out um, when you think one thing's going to happen and something else happens. And it, it was fascinating. Yeah. Um, yeah. So go and I, I know it's on Amazon Prime. It's on Amazon Prime. That's yeah. where I watched yeah. it. Yeah, I love it's it. It's really, really. I've good. seen it like three or four times, honestly. Um, and Chrissy, Chrissy, what Whitehead. is Whitehead? Chrissy Whitehead. Yeah, she, she, yeah. she made and me Jeff laugh. And Jeff Schechter, who I'm not gonna say like what, what happened with Jeff Shecky, but he was in Fiddler with me. So I was like, oh my gosh, you look so familiar. Wait, like, and he was like, mm, I might know you from somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, so the book too, but the book uh, uh, on the book, line on the line okay. is all Plugged about the origins book. of the story and how these dancers, by the way, everyone basically sold their life story for yeah. one dollar yeah. to Michael Bennett. Yeah. And Michael Bennett was off. Listen, I still love him in his choreography, but he was off with his home in the Hamptons, mm -hmm. and these dancers mm -hmm. were out there starving yeah. after this show became a mega success yeah. on Broadway. It's fascinating. Yeah. So artists own your work. Yes, absolutely. And eventually they got some money later on because there yes. was a lawsuit. But yeah. uh, it's really interesting how it all plays out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's amazing, uh, especially with Bob and Bjork. It was amazing to hear about like the people who actually were these people because yes. Bjork is the original Connie. For those of you who were just talking, speaking like Swahili right now, and you're like, who are these people? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Bjork was the original Connie in the show. Uh, so next to Wayne Salento in the show, which is like crazy, and and you know it, it's just like an amazing cast of people. It was yeah. a genius cast of people and um it, it was just like they all really were real people and some people you know he he went through bob sort of went through the line and said like okay this is your this is like who you were like this is this person that we wrote this about and this is like you You're, know judy turner's two characters it's sisters i believe yes yeah yeah and she um she was i guess he was like she always worked and we were sort of like she was like always just always working she knew michael you know they like Love this the person that they ended up like really honing in were like yeah always worked That's knew amazing. michael and like so there has to be a reason why you get the job and i was like great <laughs> Awesome, I'm gonna book it. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> but it's interesting information to have because it gives you kind of a foundation of, of understanding yeah. who yeah. Judy Turner is. Yes, I know. I It was so fun though because she's such a kooky character and she's like, she has like some of the silliest moments in the show and also like one of the craziest vocal tracks I've had to sing because she's like all over the place. Yeah. Cause she's a little bit, she's not manic, but she's just like a space cadet. Like she is all over the place. <laughs> um, so that was interesting being like, oh, I have to hit these notes while like running across the stage 
and also like try to make sense of them like what she's actually saying because if not then people are like why is she singing so fast why are you talking so fast I have no idea so I was like okay we're gonna <laughs> you talk fast anyway Challenge. though you got this I do talk very fast I talk fast some too, people so. are like what are you talking about and I feel like you have to slow down on a stage because people when they're sitting so far it's like um I had no idea when I saw Spring Awakening that Spencer lifted uh, and Michael Arden. It was genius. It was um, with American Sign Language and movement that yeah, Spencer Def West did. did it out here. Def West did it. Yeah. yeah, and then they moved it to Broadway. Mm -hmm. I had no idea how hard it was to have the person stood behind the people who the deaf actors, and um, they would s say the words that they were signing and acting in front of them. And it was actually very challenging because we don't. I don't. I didn't realize how much I rely on people's mouths and watching what they're saying. So it was like such an interesting like you know you have the subtitles and you're trying to read and and watch and then you don't have the assist of the mouth and somebody's standing behind so you're like There's I'm so trying much to like, yeah on. I was like trying to catch up so I found that like when in when you're on stage you really do have to sort of articulate take your pace a little bit slower yes I I know <sighs> an audition sometimes I have to go Take I know. a breath. I know. Slow down. I'm like, and I, I throw all the information out. I got it all. Do you speed read? Because I speed read. And I also, so sometimes my brain is like, like goes there, yeah. puts things in the just, wrong place. It yeah. doesn't put it in the wrong place, but it just, everything, my brain's working fast, my yes. mouth's working fast. Yes. So it's like, oh. Yeah. So you and I probably talking, if we started talking at our own natural speed, we'd be like, oh, oh, very <laughs> quick. I know. Yes. I know. I do the thing when you're reading, though, that like, <laughs> of course, this is very me, but like when I'm reading and I'm reading like a fiction or like something suspenseful, I'm like, I can't wait to find out and I like skip like two pages and then I figure out like what happens and I'm like okay cool that's where we're going and then I read like the rest of the details I did that with a true crime podcast because it was a true life story and I went and googled it first to find out the ending and then I was like I okay now I can listen to the rest yeah, of yeah yeah I like yeah. to know the endings I yeah. like to know what's happening and then and then I'll find the journey <laughs> I <love> very <laughs> one thing I want to ask you um before we do wrap up because we're almost almost out of time but um and I think this is really interesting because I, I find a lot of the the kids for so you think the contestants get really wrapped up in like I have to move to LA mm -hmm. and you came to LA obviously after the tour and everything mm -hmm. and then went back to New York because you were going to Fordham at the time yes, um, yes. Uh, before the show started mm -hmm. so uh, what sort of recommendations do you have for future contestants when they think that LA is the end-all be-all oh good question um, it's hard because I think that when the show is in LA so it, it's easy to and a lot of the choreographers that are on the show who you establish connections with uh, live in LA so you sort of feel like okay this is where My I should be net is this here. is yeah and you feel like you know if if I'm doing TV like I should keep doing TV um but you know people and, and I think also just really taking things that people say with a grain of salt because I know like so many people were like oh my god you have such a baby face you're gonna work all the time you're gonna be doing this you're Disney. gonna be doing that yeah <laughs> and then like Disney was sort of like oh you have short hair and we don't really know where to put you and you're not quite you know you don't look necessarily like a 15 year old but you you know so it's sort of I was in the in-between and I was very lucky to be working because I um, I know that that is very hard to do I was working but I was not necessarily satisfied and I think knowing myself in that way I was like I want to get back to New York I want to either audition for I want to do live performance rather yeah. than something on film at least at that point in my life right now I'm sort of like you know there could be a million possibilities um, but I I do feel like that if you want a career with dance in general just sort of trying to follow what path of dance will make you happy and you can have a million lives I know people who have you know worked with Twyla Tharp and then been in music videos and then gone into Broadway shows and they've had like so many different like commercial lives they do have done industrials or you know there are so many different ways you can go about it I mean like Tice like he started Broadway and then That's sort right. of worked for Janet and the, you know like he's done Worked his everything way out west, and now eventually. he's a choreographer and and so you can have different lives but I think um, speaking to what is like truest to you, I mean, Gabby Diaz knew that she didn't really, w I mean, she was in LA for a little bit, she was working and then she was like, you know what, I think I want to keep training and I That's think, right. and now she's in Chicago and apprenticing with Hubbard Street and there's sort of second company and you know, when you, it's like that, it's like amazing. It's like, yeah, and it's, she's happy. Yes. I think that's the other and thing she's too. She's dancing. happy. Yes. yes. And she's dancing, which is like the best part is like, we've trained our whole lives for this. And so it's nice when people 
people don't just say like, oh, LA isn't for me, and so I'm just gonna like call it. It, it. I think there are so many other opportunities. There are so many dance companies with just like statewide that, I mean, if you have enough money to fund statewide dance programs or funding for the arts, I'm like the biggest proponent yeah. of that. But um, supporting them is the biggest thing that you can do That's because right. so so many places have great dance companies utah portland uh, seattle boston, yeah, boston great, yeah. chicago like they all have like um and i say utah because there's several there um but it, there are dance companies that like you wouldn't expect to see like people are like i love dancing with the stars i love so you think you can dance and and they, so they tune into their tvs but then there are people who like are outside of that or who have even some of them have even been on those shows and they move and they try and go work but people aren't supporting the arts and they aren't supporting right. dance except for to tune in so like I that's like my side note I'm like go, go buy a ticket buy a ticket for your local dance company because there's some amazing dance things happening um but yes I, I I think just like trying to find what's truest to your sort of like center and and knowing that success is different for everybody um and some people think like commercial success in um, LA is going to be like their end all be all. Other people are like, I think I would love to be in an amazing company in Portland. I think I would really want to be a part of a tap company in New York, or you know, go out to Amsterdam and be you know. So follow your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and dance if you really open yourself up to the possibilities it has so many different venues to get into. So knowing that like again, success like nobody's. After the show, nobody's there to sort of like say like, "Here's Melanie," you know, "Here's Marco," <laughs> and like, and sort of like introduce you to the world. It's like you got to do it for yourself, and and there's not always going to be people clapping for you. It's going to be like you being like, "Okay, what am I doing?" I gotta get to that audition. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it was such a treat to have I'm you so here today. To be here. I'm so glad that this happened yes. and that Pippa came and joined yes, us. Yes, she's still just. Chomping on that bone. So good. <laughs> and uh, we have to usher you off to LAX. Yes. yes. I'm in Denmark right home. now, really. But yes. well, I'll be in New York by <laughs> the time. You'll be in New York by the time. So yes. I love this. Yeah. Um, but if people are not following you yet on Instagram, yes. social media, where um, can they find you? At Melanie K. Moore. Very easy. No, no so dance easy. eight Melanie. No D eight Melanie. I yeah, I love again, typical Melanie. I'm a mess sometimes. I'm just like, mm, a million things going on, and then other things I'm like, wait, what happened to that? Um, I lost my password for that, and then I because it was like set up by the so you think like sort of administrators or admins, I never really like they were like, We can't send a recovery email because it's like a random so you think email. So like my Twitter, I guess, is like non existent. I have like a Melanie K more twitter but it's very new and i don't really use it very much but instagram is that was before my time there was no d8 instagrams but there is now but Melody. there is it's not okay more more yep well, <laughs> just like the long-winded so answer for I, that. Know, I love that though we, we know where to find you at least yes, yes absolutely all right well have a safe trip back thank to you new so much york. i'm going to denmark i know I this is so all fun. about it i know i'm gonna go to the royal ballet see <gasps> supporting really? local art exactly yeah mm -hmm. all right you guys we will be back next week and it's someone from dancing with the stars Oh, that's exciting. I know, very exciting. I get to know. I'll let you, I'll tell you. <laughs> all right, you guys, thank you so much to Dance Network and Popcorn Talk for sponsoring us here today. We'll see you all next week. From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.